you do a quick summary of what you did and what you found? Yeah, for sure. Um, so in your previous years, uh, you know, I've attended these uh, computer security conferences, and, and the hot topic is hacking satellites. Um, and everyone kind of comes up with their own spin on it, but I felt like a lot of the, the hacks in the past were very theoretical. So I wanted to take kind of my own stab at it. And I was very familiar with um, Global Star's line of products. Um, they produce a series of um, asset trackers. Um, so, you know, you have an armored car, or you have your, your yacht that you want to keep an eye on. Or you, uh, they also produce uh, personal locator beacons. So you're out in the, the woods and you, uh, you know, you're lost and you need help. You press a button on this beacon and these devices talk through, talk through the Global Star satellites. And uh, they relay the data back to the uh, you know, appropriate responder or back to your, your infrastructure. So I was like, hey, you know, let's take a look at this. So I bought a bunch of the, uh, the consumer tech out there. Um, and I started looking at them and realized that the satellite communication chips used in the consumer tech are the same ones used in the commercial tech and the mil military tech as well. And so you know, it was kind of a great bang for a buck for research. For $40, I could go buy a little satellite transmitter. And um, you know, that if there was a vulnerability, it would spread across you know, the whole industry. Um, so basically, I found a way to intercept these satellite communications on either the uplink to the satellite or back on the downlink and uh, ended up uncovering that uh, there's no encryption, no signing on these communications and um, really am able to view anything that's the sent. Um, predominantly, um, they're used in asset tracking tags so I can watch where your stuff is at any given time. I, I do want to talk about that because there's a fascinating aspect about you being able to track assets in real time. Uh, track actually that's not even call it assets you're tracking really behaviors in real time because that, so. that, that, that there's all sorts of analytics that can be pulled out of that but I think what was shocking to most people is they just assumed that any sort of communication that you're going to be having with a space based transport system is going to be encrypted or at the very least it's going to have some sort of authentication before you can read the packets uh, that's actually what blew me away about your research. There, there's no, there's no encryption. They, they don't even try. It's not weak encryption. It's completely clear text. For, for sure. Yeah. Let me chime in there. Um, you know, I talked to a, a, a correspondent. She was a correspondent in the Middle East for, you know, roughly about 10 years. And her and her colleagues all used these satellite trackers to track themselves in case they were kidnapped. And they were under the impression that the, the communication was secure. Um, now to find out that this communication is not secure and that maybe they were actually being tracked the whole time and these devices maybe were being used to target people um who knows but you know the barrier to entry was very low and you know probably going forward these devices should not be used in uh you know mission critical scenarios like that uh, we've got a comment in our chat room from bleep a longtime member of our community and he's he's bringing up something that actually you did address during the q a session okay. uh, which is they're saying well you know just looking at those signals is a crime a and that kind of reminds me of Oracle's response to the, the, the bug hunts, which is, well, you're not supposed to, to, to reverse engineer our code. So, so naturally, security should be okay. It's this sort of sticking your, your head in the sand and saying, well, if it's illegal for people to look at the signals, they're not going to look at the signals. Okay. And at one point in, in your, uh, your Q&A, you, you made pains to say, look, I have never injected traffic. I could, I've done all the tests to say, yeah, I know exactly what, how this communicates, what these, how these protocols work. But uh, have, have you received any sort of that pushback of saying, well, this is not research you should be doing because now you're showing people how to, how to invade these systems? Um, honestly, no. I think everyone's been very supportive of it. And, you know, I should make clear that I really was really focusing on intercepting my own traffic and, you know, developing a, um, a capability that could inject back into the network and really did my best to not interfere with anything and do anything illegal. Um, but overall, people have been very supportive and really curious about how their data is being transmitted. And I think that's something manufacturers need to do is be very transparent about, you know, how is your data being transmitted? Is it encrypted? And, uh, you know, what are the chances of actual interception? Just so you as the consumer can make an educated guess in how to use the, uh, the tech. Well, as long as it's here, let's go ahead and look at the box. So this is, this is what you created. This is your research. This box right here can listen in on any of the signals being sent on a Global Star network uh, up to, what was the range again, about a mile or so? Yeah, so um, there's a couple components here. Um, the way the Global Star system works is that um, it works as a, what they call a bent pipe system. So essentially, the satellite receives uh, signals from the user terminal, and then it just simply repeats that data back down to Earth. Mm. Um, and so you can actually intercept either on the uplink or on the downlink. So my initial research focused on intercepting on the uplink. Uh, it's a little cheaper that way. Um, but the, it, the research can easily be translated to the downlink. So this is my uplink interception capability. Uh, it was built for under $1,000. That was part of the goal of my research is, you know, 
let's get more hacker eyes looking on these satellite systems. Um, so yeah, uh, we can take a look inside. Um, you know, up here is the antenna, uh, really an off-the-shelf uh, global star antenna. And we open it up. Um, and inside the, the brains of the beast is uh, this uh, USRP B200 made by Edis Research. It's a uh, software radio that can tune from anywhere from, uh, you know, Many, we've, we've been salivating oh. over one of those. We really wanted one of those on our well, no, our well, maker show. Well, feel free to uh, borrow it sometime <laughs> and, and you know, take, take a look. Um, but, you know, essentially, um, we tune this to about 1.6 gigahertz, and we uh, pipe the data through this uh, this low noise amplifier. You kind of see it on the top of the case right here. Oh, there, there we, go. we go. So, yep, this is the antenna goes in the low noise amplifier, and this data comes back down into the board. And, uh, you know, then we do actually all the decoding and uh, processing in software uh, using GNU Radio and Python uh, for you open source fans out there. Uh, now, quick question. If, if they did encrypt their signals, does that software-defined radio board actually have the ho horsepower to run decryption, or would you have to do that on, on a connected computer? You know, the, the board actually does have a ton of horsepower in it, um, but it, it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to implement those right. algorithms in an FPGA and stuff. Um, it really would be more easy to do it computer Just side. Just dump, dump it off. Yeah. I'm actually playing around with uh, with CUDA right now and trying to you know offload some of the uh, processing you know to a GPU. Um, I think there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. Really, just barrier to entry. Well, the amazing thing about this is this actually wasn't that hard to create. I mean, you had to have the know-how. You had to know what to listen for. You had to know how to program the SDR to to get on those frequencies. Mm -hmm. But it, this is a, t a tiny little box, and I think you said your your total bill of materials was under $1,000, right? It's like a $600 software-defined radio, and then the individual components brings it up to about a grand. Correct, and you know the, the grand even included the, uh, the asset trackers I was looking at. Um, so, so really, barrier to entry is low, uh, and, and it's, it's fantastic.